Hello, in this section I will talk about pre-operative evaluation and preparation of a child prior to surgery. So, when a child comes for, uh, for surgery, a pre-anesthetic checkup should be very precise and very to the point. So, what should be included? Definitely in pre-anesthetic checkup, the first thing which we are, which we take is history. So, the history should have all relevant medical, surgical and family history uh, noted and any complication associated. So, the first thing, the history which we should take should have medical, surgical and family history including all the complications, including all complications. Then all the history pertaining to allergy to any food product or drug should also be included. So allergy history. Now any patient if is on any medication that should also be taken into consideration. And one very important thing which during pediatric pre-anesthetic checkup we have to see is URTI, right? So we have to talk about upper, we have to know about upper respiratory tract infection. Now this is such a common uh, condition in which your child may be posted for surgery, a child with URTI. So what should be your approach when there is a child posted for some elective planned surgery and has URTI. Well, as I said, you will face this situation more than often. Why? Because one child six to seven times in a year has URTI, right? And one URTI uh, episode lasts for nearly two weeks. So you will seldom, I mean, get a child, I mean, very less uh, a child would be free in, in an year would be absolutely free from URTI. So, you will more than often you will get a child with a mild URTI or maybe a recent URTI. What should be your approach, right? We have to understand. So, approach in URTI. See, we know that 65% of upper respiratory tract infection is viral and only 34% is bacterial. Now, viral is self-limiting, does not require much of medication, just a general hydration and all. Now, let's say why we are so much worried about URTI because URTI is associated with very operative respiratory adverse effect. So, what are the adverse effect which is associated with URTI? Your laryngospasm, your bronchospasm, your uh, pneumonia, your uh, let's say uh, unplanned hospital admission, desaturation during manipulation of the airway etc. So, we are so much concerned about URTI because it can be associated, it can be associated with perioperative adverse effect, perioperative adverse events, right? Perioperative adverse events like your laryngospasm your bronchospasm, your desaturation, right, your pneumonia and this all can lead to unplanned, unplanned hospital admission, right, hospital admission. So, we need to avoid this URTI, I mean this perioperative, uh, as a, uh, perioperative adverse respiratory event to happen, unplanned admission. But do we need to cancel every case of URTI in order of fear of perioperative respiratory adverse effect? Actually, no. As I told you, this is so common condition. And you will seldom get a child without a recent URTI or without a mild URTI coming for surgery. So, a very meticulous approach should be practiced in these and this would help us in making a decision whether this child should be <laughs> taken for surgery or not.
what should be the approach so this is a flow chart based approach which we should practice so if a child with urti urti posted for surgery so child with urti right with urti so if the if the child is posted we have to take a very thorough a very important very focused history in this child we should focus on the baseline saturation right we should focus on baseline saturation we should focus on the comorbidities if child has any cardiac or respiratory comorbidity like asthma we should ask the parents of the child about the recent change in behavior the child has become less playful more sleepy so patient feeling about the child's change in behavior so all these four things we have to take in history and this will help us in deciding the severity so urti based on this history can be divided into urti with mild risk and urti with severe risk so what are the things which tell us that this urti is urti with severe risk if the child has fever on physical examination more than 38.5 degrees celsius so fever if the child has mucopurulent secretion which is a sign of active bacterial infection and if the child has uh, signs and symptoms of lower respiratory tract infection like wheeze rales etc on auscultation and if the child has change in the behavior child has become lethargy less playful so if these four things are present that is mucopurulent cough fever lrti the lower respiratory tract infection signs of lower respiratory tract infection and change in the behavior of the child child becoming more lethargic kindly cancel the case at least for 4 weeks right and then reevaluate the child because these are the condition for with high risk for respiratory adverse effect so for more than 2 weeks mostly for 2 to 4 weeks we kind of cancel the case right so for 2 weeks and after 2 weeks 2 to 4 weeks whatever you decide and you again evaluate the child the surgery is elective surgery and this four thing present in a child with urti increases the risk of perioperative respiratory adverse effects so we need to postpone the surgery okay if the child is of mild risk that these features are not there just a history of urti but of less than one week or uh, ago the child has which mother says the child has a cough or cold just one week back now signs and symptoms may persist or just plain rhinorrhea or uh, leaky nose etc may persist so let's see what is the surgery and anesthesia plan now if the surgery which is uh, which the child is uh, posted for that surgery requires intubation if it's an abdominal surgery or surgery with a high risk of aspiration where intubation is required so intubation reco not required if it is only we can get it done under monitored anesthesia care or lma if we can do that right intubation not required monitored anesthesia care lma we can do it that is well enough if according to the surgical plan intubation is not required we can just simply proceed with surgery and we don't have to have any much uh, like we don't have to cancel the surgery if intubation is required we have to again stratify the risk benefit ratio again few important things we have to consider does the child has a history of asthma or obstructive sleep apnea does the child is of less than 1 year of age and is a smoker present in his house father or mother a smoker so he is exposed to the smoke if these three features are present again postpone the surgery for another 2 weeks and then reevaluate re if this is not present right we can again proceed if it is not present we can proceed so child with mild urti only with running nose if intubation not required we can proceed if intubation is required and surgery and the child does not have these three important risk factors which i just talked about less than one year more risk of uh, airway adverse effect or uh, child with exposure of passive smoking child with history of osa and all if this these three features are not there we can proceed with surgery right 
if these three features are there and the child requires intubation, then again we should postpone the surgery and reevaluate uh, after let's say two to four weeks and then plan further. Okay, so this is the approach. This should be the approach. Okay, so this meticulous approach will decrease the cancellation and also would decrease the perioperative respiratory adverse effects. So, what did I tell you? A quick recap: child with URTI, if it has, it is, it has child is with mild risk, right? And if child is with severe risk, severe risk, four features I told you: purulent secretions. Lower, lower respiratory tract infections, infection signs and symptoms, then your fever and change in the behavior of the child, child becoming more lethargic. You need to postpone, postpone. If it is mild risk and no intubation, no intubation required. You can get it done under MAC, monitored anesthesia care, or you can get it done under LMA, right? We can proceed we can proceed with the procedure. If intubation required, intubation required, then we have to see three things, age, age less than one year, if OSA, history of OSA, and if there is, let's say, passive smoking, history of passive smoking. If these three are present, again, you need to postpone. If these three are not present, then we can proceed, okay? So, this simple flowchart we need to follow, okay. Now, let's say the child with mild risk just with running nose, now it could be either allergic rhinitis or it could be the URTI. So, child with clear rhinorrhea, clear rhinorrhea, the low risk child, clear rhinorrhea. It could be URTI still unresolved or it could be allergic rhinitis, allergic rhinitis. If this is the case, right, if this is the case, then you just give one to two drops of oxyzylometazoline, the nasal drops, one to two drops of oxymetazoline, 025 percent. And if possible, not use, uh, do not intubate. If possible, as I told you, if possible, do not use tracheal tube, right? Use a supraglottic airway device. Now, there are few scores which helps in our decision making, right? Though they are not a very validated scores, not very commonly used. So, there are few scores which help in decision making, in accepting the child with URTI, decision making, in accepting the child with URTI. One very famous score is Colds score, C-O-L-D-S, Colds score. So, what comprises of C-O-L-D-S, Colds score? Now, it has Colds score, C stands for current signs and symptoms, onset, Onset of the disease, O stands for onset of, onset of the disease, L stands for any lung disease, right? D stands for the device, the airway device you are going to use and S stands for the surgery. Well, if the, there is no current sign and symptoms, then the score 1 is given and if there is a moderate to severe sign and symptom like purulence, wet cuff, etc., score 5 is given, right? For mild symptoms, score 2 is given. Onset more than four weeks ago, score one. Mild two to four weeks ago, and let's say less than two weeks ago, again five score is given. Score point five is given. Lung disease none, mild, none one, mild lung disease two, and severe lung disease five. Airway device. If we don't need to use any airway device except face mask one. If LMA superglottic, then mild it is two. And if endotracheal tube, then again 5, right? Surgery, if it is, let's say, non-airway surgery, if it's a major airway surgery, 5. If it is a minor surgery, minor airway surgery, then mild 2. And non-airway surgeries, then no, like 2, 1 is given the point. And uh, scoring is done. If the child has a very high score, then 
most it is better to postpone the surgery and post the child when the child is more stabilized okay if it is score is less we can go ahead with the surgery so this is not a very validated scoring system but this is a scoring system used at some place for helping us in making the decision whether we can take a child with uiti or not